Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special live edition of the Explore VM podcast here in beautiful San, I almost said San Diego, San Francisco, California at VMware Explore 2022. Uh, I am utilizing the wonderful, the CTO advisor set for a real quick video interview. Uh, and thanks to my friend Keith here, we can actually do this. So Keith, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. I'm Keith Townsend, principal of the CTO advisor. All right, so it's a little bit of a different vibe here this year. We've got a lot fewer people, the hall feels smaller, the floor feels smaller. What are your first impressions overall of the rebrand from VMworld to VMware Explorer? Wow, you know, that's a pretty good question, Paul. My initial thoughts were, this feels like a VM world light, bigger than the yeah. VM, VM, VM uh, VBug user comp, obviously. Yeah, yeah way yeah. more fancier. And then, you know what I think, day two of the conference, uh, I'm starting to feel like this is, I'm starting to feel like this is VMware Explorer yeah. versus VMworld. Right. VMware Explorer is the successor to VMworld. Yeah. And I'm starting to feel it. Like it's a smaller conference, still intense, yep. a lot of great conversations, but I think that VMworld, I think 2019 was the last, the last VMworld as we knew it. Right, right, for sure. And I think to that point, a lot of us arrived here on Sunday, even Saturday, and the true conference didn't really kick off until Tuesday. So right. we had Sunday and Monday that we were looking at, looking to get back to that VMworld vibe that we had. Right. But once it got going, you could tell it became its own thing. Like there's definitely a, a change in the way that, I, I think, the, the way that they did the keynotes. Like what was it, what came out of that? Uh, there's a lot more content crammed, in, not crammed in there, but you know, pushed through like rather quickly. Um, and then there's definitely like the shift in the focus because vSphere 8 was announced and they, I feel like they barely touched upon it, and they talk more about the, the containerization, and the future of the data center, the future of work, et cetera, and like refactoring applications. So with that being said, what stood out from you, for you from the keynote? So surprisingly, what's, you know, I, 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 for those of you who don't know me, I've been pretty critical of Tanzu, the Tanzu brand, yeah. and where is it, what is it, what is it doing? VMware over the past two years since VM World 2019 have quietly put in the work around that Tanzu brand. Yeah. I'm starting to better, I don't equate Tanzu anymore with just Tanzu grid. Yeah. It, Tanzu is that umbrella of solutions. So TAP, Tanzu Application Platform, what previously pivotal, the thing I got mostly excited about was one that somehow is going to be integrated with OpenShift. They yeah. mentioned OpenShift at VMware Explorer 2022. Kelsey Hightower was from Google Cloud. Yeah. Was got eight minutes of keynote time, but Tap has the ability to after you deploy a application of auto cataloging APIs in which auto documenting cataloging APIs. So for those of us that have played around with APIs, yeah. like that's a big deal. Yeah. If, if you can't um, if you can't find the API, you can't use the API, right? And right. One of the biggest challenges is finding the API. So I'm super excited about that from just not somebody who necessarily writes applications, but sometimes consumes APIs. Okay. So going back to the the vSphere portion again, like. It's VMware is still in so many data centers. It's like obviously we're looking at the cloud, we're moving cloud forward, cloud first, et cetera. With the announcements that they made with vSphere 8, the one that stood out to me was the uh, the offloading portion with Project Monterey going live. Now that I find kind of intriguing, but looking at that, so the ability to offload some of the workload into these these smart NICs, into the data processing units, to free up about what did they say about 20% additional CPU on the hosts. At first I was super excited, I'm like, this is cool. Like, look at, we're going to be able to condense things. But then I, then I got to thinking, in a cloud world, is that still as important as it would have been maybe five, 10 years ago? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, you look at AWS Nitro, and the temptation to say, AWS Nitro. Yeah. This is AWS Nitro, but for everyone else. I don't know if I talked to m many, customers who are excited about freeing up 20% capacity of their <laughs> vSphere right. environment. Like, I think to your point, five years ago, 
big deal. I'm trying to yeah. optimize and get the most out of it. If we're being honest, if I if I had to guesstimate, most people's vSphere environments probably isn't as busy as they once were. Yep. So the need to squeeze as much performance out of it while that need exists with absolutely within a subset of customers, I don't know if that's the majority of customers challenge anymore. Right, for sure. And that's, you know, when I'm out talking with customers, when I'm out working on developing cloud and data center solutions, more often than not, we are looking at a reduction in the on-prem. Like, we're looking at a VMware renewal is coming up. Well, guess what? The ELA doesn't make any more sense or doesn't make as much sense as it used to because they're scaling back. There's workloads going to the clouds, going to SaaS, like going to all these offerings. So I, I, I think you're right. I think, again, initially it sounded really cool, but We'll see if it pans out, like how great that's really going to be. Now, the other question that I've had for people around the conference, and it, it stems from conversations I've had with coworkers and friends, and you know, looking back at the history of the data center, you know, mainframes, and we had physical individual servers running individual applications, and VMware came. I was the theory that people have thrown out is containers are going to kill VMware. Now, my response to that has always been, did VMware kill physical servers? Did VMware kill mainframes? They're still out there. Not as, not as robust and not you know, like they used to be. Do you think containers are going to kill VMware or cloud going to kill VMware? Or is VMware going to be one of those things that's with us for the next 30 years? Yeah, that, that's an easy answer. VMs are going to be with us to the end of a couple of our careers. Like yeah. if you're just starting out in IT, VMware's probably going to be there to the end of your career. And I think the question is not whether or not is VMware still going to be there? Is at what scale? Yeah. And, I, and unlike physical servers, unlike mainframe, the scale, the long tail of VMware vSphere is much bigger than any of those environments. Like yeah. the world, the past 15 years has been built on vSphere. Like all the landscape <laughs> is VMware vSphere. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. What's the best platform to run containers on? VMs. So, and you still need to manage those VMs. I remember the early days of containerization and people saying, why would you run containers within VMs? Yeah. Seems like a silly question now. <laughs> right. VM has na uh, added namespaces to vSphere 7 and vSphere 7.1. It Kubernetes is a an integral part of vSphere 8.0, I'm sure of, I'm sure. Yeah. So, will VMware vSphere be around a long time? Absolutely, unlike the mainframe, unlike a quote unquote physical servers, it's just going to be more prevalent than everything else. Right. How much time are we spending maintaining and managing in it? You know, that's to be seen. <laughs> right, right. So shifting gears here a little bit with our last question. So obviously we're on the show floor here. Um, has any vendors, has anything new or anybody that's been around for a while, anything jumped out at you that of note at this show? So we've had a ton of sponsors on my show, the CTO yeah. Advisor, uh, from Veritas to Cohesity to Oracle Cloud, uh, list goes on and on, and all of these companies that were built in not a cloud first world, all have very solid cloud stories. Yeah. Uh, from Oracle Cloud, lift and shift story, to Cohesity. Remember when Cohesity was a box? Yeah. Like, it, it was an appliance, and now they have a solid software story. We talked to Sanjay Poonin. Sanjay Poonin, yep. the COO, former COO of VMware, is now leading a data protection, data management company. Yep. The world has changed. What? what's available and where and every vendor in this space has just as much opportunity as VMware does in this new landscape that's uh, that's basically wild wild west right right and I actually was afforded the opportunity this morning to have breakfast with him um, and I was impressed with his vision for Cohesity and what he's trying to do uh, within like the ecosystem and like the way he's reaching out. So I think they're going to be one to watch in the next couple of years. Obviously, backup and recovery data protection, so it's a, it's a deep market. But what I heard today really kind of piqued my interest. So I want to say thank you for your time. Um, I'm certain my, my listeners, my viewers know you, but where, where can they find you? Where can they reach out to you? 
You know, I, 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 I say this so much, I think I might just cut and paste it into uh, <laughs> all of the videos at the end. If you want to find more about the CTO Advisor, thectoadvisor.com. I'm on Twitter, at CTO Advisor on Twitter. DMs are open. Excellent, well thank you. And thank you to everybody watching. You know, you can find me on Twitter at ExploreVM, at ExploreVM Podcast. Uh, most social handles, I'm ExploreVM, I'm easy to find. If you'd love to be, I'd love to have you as a guest, or if you've got a topic idea, go ahead and reach out, paul at explorevm.com. And thank you everybody. <laughs>